Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6 Practice Problems Review is on Unit 5, Lesson 11, Dividing Numbers That Result in Decimals. And so if we look at Question 1, use long division to show that the fraction and decimal in each pair are equal. Our first question, 3 fourths and 75 hundredths. So we can take our 3 and divide by... Well, we know we are going to need to put in a decimal point here and a handful of zeros. And so, 4 does not go into 3. We have our decimal point, but it goes into 30 about 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. 30 minus 28 is 2. Bring down the 0. And 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4 is 20. We have a remainder of 0. And that's it for this one. Put a couple extra zeros there. Our solution is 75 hundredths for 3 divided by 4, which does match 75 hundredths. As we slide to question B, 3 fiftieths and 6 hundredths. Well, 3 on the inside, 50 on the outside. We'll put in our decimal point and some zeros as we go to divide. 50 does not go into 3. In fact, it does not go into 30 either. But it goes into 100 6 times. And 6 times 50 is exactly 300. We have a remainder of 0. And so, we have 6 hundredths for 3 divided by 50, which is the same thing there as 6 hundredths. Sliding over to C. 7 25ths and 28 hundredths. And if we take 7 and divide by 25. Our 7s is in the one place. We have a bunch of zeros in our tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and Ten thousandths. Twenty-five does not go into seven. Bring our decimal point up. But it goes into seventy about two times. As two times twenty-five is fifty. We have twenty left over. And bring down a zero for two hundred. And twenty-five times eight is that two hundred. We're left then with the remainder of zero. And so our solution here, 7 25th, 7 divided by 25 is 28 hundredths, which is matching that. So in question 1, we used long division to show that the fraction and decimal in each pair are equal. In question 2, May walked 1 eighth of a 30 mile walking trail. How many miles did May walk? Explain or show your reasoning. One way of looking at this is 1 eighth of 30 is 30 times 1 eighth, which really is the same thing as 30 divided by 8. And so we can set up a long division question here. We can go 30 divided by 8. And so now, if I just, knowing what's coming, <laughs> add a handful of zeros back here. 8 does not go into 3, but it goes into 30 about 3 times. 3 times 8 is 24. We're left with 6. Bring down that 0 from the tenths place. 8 goes into 60 about 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. 
left with 4 from that subtraction. Bring down the 0 from the hundredths place. And 8 times 5 is going to be 40. And we have no remainder, which is good news. And so we have our solution here of 3 and 75 hundredths. So how many miles did she walk? 3 and 75 hundredths miles. As we move on to question 3, we're going to use long division to find each quotient and write your answer as a decimal. Our first question is 99 divided by 12. So 99 on the inside, 12 on the outside, and we just know that we're going to need a decimal point and a good handful of zeros here. And I already like to set up that decimal point straight up just to make sure we have everything ready to go. Now, 12 does not go into 9, but it goes into 99 about 8 times. And so 8 times 12 is 96. And as we subtract, we're left with 3 in our 1s and bring down our 0. 12 goes into 30 about 2 times. 12 times 2 is 24. We have 6. Bring down this 0. And 12 goes into 60 exactly 5 times. And as we subtract that, we're left with no remainder. And so our solution here is 8 and 25 hundredths. As we move on now to B, 216 divided by 5. So 5 on the outside, 216 on the inside, and again, we'll have a decimal point with a couple of zeros here and put that decimal point straight up. Five doesn't go into the two for the hundreds, but it goes into the 21 about four times. Four times five is 20. You get one left. Bring down your six from the ones. Goes in about three times, because five times three is 15. You're left with one. Bring down the zero from the tenths place. And five times two is 10. You're left with no remainder, and so our final answer here is simply 43 and 2 tenths. As we move on to C, 1,998 divided by 8. So we're going to have our 8 on the outside, our 1,988 on the inside, Have our decimal point and a handful of zeros here. Might as well bring that decimal point straight up. Eight doesn't go into the one in the thousands place, but it goes into the 19 about two times, as two times eight is 16. We subtract and we're left with three, and we'll bring down our eight in the tens. Eight goes into 38 about four times, because four times eight is 32. 38 minus 32 is 6, and so we'll bring down our 8 from the 1's place. Our adventure continues. 8 times 8 is exactly 64, and so we're left with 4. And now we bring down our 0 from the 10's place. A little awkward space there. 8 goes into 40 exactly five times. And so there's our solution with no remainder. And that is 248 and 5 tenths. So we can use long division here in expressing our answers as decimals to these questions. 
So as we continue on to question four, to find the decimal of 9 25 Tyler reasoned, 9 25 is equivalent to 18 50th and to 36 hundredths. So the decimal of 9 25 is 36 hundredths. Use long division to show that Tyler is correct. All right, we're going to take our 9 and divide by 25, which means 25 on the outside, or 9 on the inside, and we'll put several zeros on the inside here. 25 does not go into 9, but it goes into 90 about three times. So we can subtract the 75, and we are left with 15, bring down the 0, and 25 goes into 150 six times. We subtract 6 times 25 is 150 exactly, and we're left with no remainder. And so this proves that 36 hundredths is 9 25 And so now our question becomes, is 1850 is also 36 hundredths? And use long division to support your answer. So 50 on the outside and 18 on the inside. We'll put in our handful of zeros here. 50 does not go into the 1, does not go into the 18, but it does go into 180 about three times. Because 3 times 50 is 150. We're left with 30. We can bring down the 0. And 50 goes into 100, I'm sorry, 300 exactly six times. So as you subtract, you're left with no remainder here. And so once again, we have the solution that we are looking for. We get 36 hundredths when we did 9 divided by 25. We get 36 hundredths when we do 18 divided by 50. And I'm sure if we set up 36 divided by 100, we would get 36 hundredths as well. And so now, going into a re review question here from Unit 5, Lesson 4, complete the calculations so that each shows the correct difference. Well, the first thing I'm going to do here is set up our decimal point with 0, 0, 0 on all of these. Just to put these in here. Fill in all these in tens, hundreds, and thousands. And now we need to ask ourselves, selves, what must this 0 minus something be to get to 9? Well, I'm going to have to borrow something here. This thing must have been a 10, which meant at one point we would have had a borrow here, which would have been a 10, but then a 9. This one had to been a 10, and then a 9, and this has to be a 4. So now, 10 minus what is 9? Well, 1. 9 minus what is 2? 7. 9 minus what is 3? 6. And 4 minus what is 4? Four, well, 4 minus 0 is 4. And so there's our solution, 671 thousandths. Same kind of logic is going to take place here in B and in C, for that matter. This last 0 is going to have to be a 10, which meant we borrowed from the 10 there to be a 9, which meant we had to borrow from a 10 here, so that's a 9, and that's going to be a 0. So now, 10 minus what is 5? 5. 9 minus what is 1? 8. 9 minus what is 0? 9. We have our decimal point here and the 0. So we have 985 thousands is in the box there. And so lastly, this would have had to been a 10. You can see the whole unbundling, borrowing process taking place. 10 minus what is 3? 7. 9 minus what is 6? 3. 9 minus what is 8? 1. 0 in the 1's place, because 0 minus 0 is, well, 0. So that leaves us with 100 
37 thousandths as our solution for the box there. And in our last question of the day, use the equation 124 times 15 equals 1,860 and show what you know about fractions, decimals, and place value to explain how to place the decimal point when you compute 1 and 24 hundredths times 15 hundredths. When I look at 1 and 24 hundredths, what I'm seeing here is a number that's in the hundredths place. And when I'm looking at 15 hundredths, I'm looking at a number that's also in the hundredths place. And so when I multiply the one hundredths times the one hundredths, I'm going to be in the one ten thousandths place. And so if I look at this number, is in one's place, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, I can fill in going backwards the zero, the six, the eight, and the 1, and then might as well put the 0 in the 1's place, to get this correctly lined up. could also write this as 186 thousandths as well, but most likely you can just keep it there. That's it for this lesson, lesson 11, on dividing numbers that result in decimals. Good luck.